it's Horsey Steph, and today I am back with another Horse Trainer Reacts to Horse Movies. Today we are continuing to watch Misty, the 1961 film about some kids that want to buy a pony from the Assateague Islands. In the first segment, we learned a little bit more about the history of the Assateague ponies, and we're introduced to the pony that the kids really want and how improbable it is that they could possibly get that pony. If you guys could go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos, that would help me out a ton. And let's go ahead and continue on watching this movie and see what happens next. But these Assateague cults, yep, except they're all full right here on the farm. All right, so it looks like he breeds Assateague ponies at his place. Um, obviously not wild Assateague ponies, but he takes Assateague ponies from the island and then domesticates them and breeds them, the grandfather does. So that's interesting. I'm surprised there would be so much market for it, just because I think Assateague ponies aren't super sought after anyway. I mean, obviously in the local area, they're quite popular because they're cheap, they're available, etc. But you don't really ever hear of Assateague ponies outside of that very small area. You know, people don't go states away to get an Assateague pony. I mean, maybe some people do, but you never hear of it. So it's interesting that you would be able to commercialize breeding them. Okay, so these are clearly wild ponies that they are catching by just grabbing. Um, so many issues with that. I know it is something that people do with like really young babies quite a bit. And obviously because these are ponies, even though they're older than that, you can still get away with it. You can still manhandle them. You are actually stronger than them. But what you're doing is just shutting that pony down so much right from the beginning. You're teaching it that you're just going to come and force it to do something that causes it to panic and causes it extreme stress and anxiety and that it literally physically cannot get away no matter what it does because you are bigger and stronger than that. Overpowering animals like that is never a good idea. Obviously there's a time and a place where you have to, but you should always work towards training the animal to accept handling in a gentler, kinder way because this is literally ruining the pony. You're shutting the pony down and as it goes through its life, it's gonna get more and more shut down and eventually learn to just give up and stop even trying to fight what scares it and just become like completely dead. And I know that that's a very common thing in the horse world, these shut down kind of dead in the face horses, but it is a problem and one that I think we are so far past needing to do. We know so much more now there's absolutely no reason to continue on shutting horses down like that. And this kind of handling is just an extremely aggressive way of doing it. I feel really bad for the pony. Can you imagine if you were in that situation and some person, monster, I mean, even just another person came up and grabbed you and prevented you from escaping. And you know people. Now imagine it's somebody you're not familiar with, like a species you're not familiar with. Say a ape comes up and grabs you and forces you to not be able to escape. Like that would be petrifying. Can you imagine the PTSD and trauma you would gain from that? I mean, the psychological implications alone are enough reasons not to do it, much less the long-term effects on how that plays into the horse's training and general interaction with people. They're first going to go through a phase of trying to get away even harder and faster and trying to like one up the person. And then they're going to start to realize that it's all futile and stop wasting their energy and just completely like become a vegetable and go slack when people are around because what's even the point, right? That's really horrific in so many ways. And you can tell this pony is trying to get away and they're stopping it and preventing it from getting away. It's just, the pony looks completely terrified and they just shoved it on a trailer and now it's gonna have that panic attack in the trailer too. I mean, there's so many things wrong with it. It makes it really easy to load the pony because you know, he's little and they just manhandled it and like, it needed to run away and they finally let it run into the trailer. So it was like, thank God, 
for a brief moment, it's going to think it got a little release and it got left alone and then it's going to realize suddenly it's all by itself in this super scary area and be even more scared than it was originally. I mean, there's just nothing fair about this for this poor pony and you've now created not just trauma around people, not just trauma around leaving other horses, but also trauma around the trailer. So those are all things that are later going to have to be addressed and fixed when you could have just taken the time to do it properly in the first place, so none of that would have been an issue. A fire department. Nobody's allowed to just go over and help. This is an example of a time a horse would scream, so that was accurate that the horse was screaming. I would expect to see a lot more commotion inside that trailer as well. It would surprise me if this baby was just standing there screaming. I would think he would be running, kicking, throwing an utter tantrum to try to avoid the situation as best as possible because, again, he thinks the world is ending. Like, that's the only way a baby is going to process this at this moment. He doesn't have the life skills to understand it. So he's just going to think the world is ending and think that he needs to do anything in his power to get out of this situation to save himself or else he's going to die. And that might sound dramatic, but if you think about it, he's been taken away from everything he knows. He's been shoved in a dark box by himself. He doesn't even have his friends and his companions to make himself feel a little better. Everything about that was just horribly terrifying, being ripped away from the life he knows and shoved in this metal box. You know somebody who can break him in real quick? A good trainer won't break a fool. He'll gentle him. All right. Well, the grandfather is right about that. A good trainer won't break a foal. They will gentle them. And this idea of finding somebody that will break in a foal real fast is exactly what's wrong with the horse industry still to this day. However, what did they just do? What did they just do grabbing that foal out of its herd of other babies and, you know, manhandling it into a trailer? They just broke the foal. And, you know, why would you now go backwards and start gentling it when you've already set the precedent that you're going to manhandle it and force it to do whatever you want because you really don't care about the implications of that? I don't understand how you can differentiate the two starting a horse aggressively versus shoving a horse in a trailer aggressively. It's all really the same thing. You're handling the horse aggressively and unfairly. Just keep talking to him. Horses soon learn to like the sound of the human voice. He's scared. He'd be scared when you get him home. Yeah, he's scared because you shoved him in there without any proper preparation. You can absolutely get a horse to where they calmly and confidently walk on a trailer the first time they've ever seen it, confidently stand in the trailer, and are relaxed for the entire trailer ride the first time they've ever gone on one. That's not impossible and it's not that hard to do, it just takes a little more time because again, as the grandfather said, breaking is the fast way and gentling is the sure way. So why didn't you apply this to the trailering? And, you know, trailering especially is one of those things I think people often force horses into because it is the number one issue I hear about with horses. Oh, they're difficult to trailer. Trailering is such a simple, easy task to teach a horse because all you're asking them to do is walk into something and stand there quietly. It takes very little skill to teach a horse to trailer. It just takes patience. And a lot of times people don't have that patience. So they rush the process, force the horse into the trailer, traumatize the horse, and then the horse thinks, well, you know what? I never want to do that again. It was horrible. And every time you force a horse on the trailer, it reinforces the idea that it never ever wants to participate in that again. And it gets more and more and more and more worried about the trailer when it didn't have to be worried in the first place. There was absolutely no reason for it to be worried. Just could have taken the time. Imagine that, taking the time. You're not happy with this pony and say, uh, all about a month, all I'm back, and I give you back your money. That is a pretty good deal to, you know, say you'll take the pony back a month later if they're not happy with them. I would never ever offer that because the amount of training they're gonna put into the pony in a month, unless they literally abandon him in a field, they have the potential to completely ruin the pony to a point where it's gonna take actually years to fix, not even the month that they had him. It's gonna take so much longer to fix the damage you could cause in one month with a pony. 
So I would never offer to take a horse back after that amount of time. I don't even do trials with horse sales anymore because honestly I've been burned and I don't think it's worth it. You just can't trust what's gonna happen when the horse leaves your possession. You can't trust how they're gonna be ridden, how they're gonna be trained, how they're gonna be handled. And it's really not that hard to ruin a good horse by just handling them and treating them unfairly. And it really doesn't take a lot of time to create trauma in a horse. You know, they're just like us. You don't need 20 experiences of something traumatizing to have a problem with this trauma. You need one traumatic experience and you get PTSD and it takes you years to get over it. So there is absolutely no way no way I would take this pony back, but sweet deal. And um, obviously we know the grandfather doesn't really gentle horses as much as he's talking about it. He manhandles them. So with that training style, I'm sure he'll just shut down whatever problems this guy created and the pony will be good as new and completely shut down by the time he's done with it. Horse is a dumb animal. no reason for challenge to me. Did he just say, just because horses are dumb animals, there's no reason for their owners to be? Because horses are not dumb. Actually, sometimes I think they're more intelligent than the general population. Granted, horses think really differently than us and they don't process and they don't um, reason as well as us, but they are very, very smart. They associate very quickly. They're much quicker to learn things than we are, um, which is actually, I think, what makes us think they're dumb. They learn things so fast that we don't even realize they've learned it and we've actually taught them wrong and been inconsistent. And then we're like, oh, how did you figure out how to do that? Why are you doing that now? Don't realize that we actually taught them accidentally to do whatever the behavior is that we don't want. And then, you know, we try to get bigger to fix the fact that they have learned something we don't want them to learn and they get utterly confused and just start acting out in terror. That's, I think, how most training programs go and why you might be led to believe they're stupid even though they're so, so smart. We're gonna buy the Phantom by Cody Pennington. We're just gonna have to set a course and hold to it. Yep, you are gonna have to set a course and hold to it. You're gonna have to figure out how you're gonna save up that money. You have four months to get $100, so... Despite the fact that I think they're not gonna get the Phantom just because, you know, she's too old and they don't sell horses that old, they definitely are gonna have to figure out how to get that money in hand um, and work hard over the next four months to achieve that goal. Because I know that in this day and age, $100 was quite a bit of money and something that's really gonna take a lot of hard work to get. Well, we can get odd jobs to do after school. It's a good plan, doing some odd jobs after school Spending your summer working really hard to finish up getting the rest of that money. We can teach them some good manners. Maybe halter break them. Bet your people will pay more money for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you take the time to halter break these foals, they're going to be way easier to sell than completely feral babies. Because, I mean... People want a trained horse that they can start handling right away. And a lot of people are not equipped to deal with unbroken, untrained, untouched babies. So I like how this kid is thinking and I'm really surprised the grandfather doesn't take the time to train these babies that he's selling. Because it just seems to me as a breeder to not put any time into handling your foals, you're wasting so much opportunity to generate more income and have a much more profitable, successful business. But maybe he feels like it's not worth the time. He gets enough money anyway. I can't imagine that though. I mean, training is worth so much more than just genetics and bloodline confirmation. People will pay so much money for training. Especially when you're starting to talk about like completely untouched versus halter broke. That's going to make a huge difference in the price. Because that's the kind of stuff nobody wants to do. And nobody wants to even look at a horse that they can't handle and get to know before they buy that's smart so he's thinking oh i'll train these babies for grandpa and then hopefully get the difference in price since they should be able to be sold for more now it's a great idea i don't know that the grandpa is really going to give him a whole lot of money for that time spent training but i'm sure that the grandfather would be willing to pay him something for it um and I also question how good this boy is going to do starting these horses. I don't know what his background is, and I don't know how many ponies he's gentled in his life. 
But it makes me think that probably not a lot, given the fact that the grandfather breeds ponies and he doesn't even do the training himself. So it makes me think the boy can't really know what he's doing and he's more likely to ruin a bunch of these than actually get them trained. At least ruin the first few before he starts to figure out what he's doing. Of course I take the manly coat. You be willing to pay more money for it? Like, as much as ten dollars more? Ten dollars more just for a nice mannerly trained pony. That is crazy to me. I mean ten dollars you're gonna put in hour upon hour of work. I would assume you're at least gonna charge fifty dollars more at minimum. You're selling them for what 125 now? I, 135 for a trained pony versus 125 for a not trained pony. That doesn't make sense to me. Even understanding the price difference now versus then, I would think you'd be at least getting 170. I mean, at minimum. But even then, I would think probably closer to 200 for a trained pony. But I guess it depends on how trained we're talking about. Are we just talking like you can put a halter on and walk it around? Or it's saddle broke or what? I guess we'll see. But I would think even just for like basic handling, haltering, leading, grooming, picking up its feet, at least $170 to $200. Both marine and high halter break in general all your coats. Would you pay us the $10 extra to get for selling each of them? I'm surprised the grandfather's not jumping at this opportunity. It's a deal. You don't need to tell me what you're gonna do with them. I'm glad the grandfather's agreed because it seems like a good deal for both of them. You know, you might as well allow these kids to halter break the ponies and see how that goes and pay them the extra since it's costing you nothing it's not costing you time and obviously if you're making the extra money you're just passing it along so it's a win-win for them and for you honestly maybe it'll make it easier to sell them too not just get more money for them well, let's see how these kids go about halter breaking ponies i'm highly curious to see how this goes All right, so basically they're just applying pressure to try to get the horse to go forward and pulling, and when the horse doesn't go forward, they have somebody behind flagging it forward. Not a bad way of doing it, honestly. Like there's way worse ways you can halt to break a baby. Um, not exactly how I would do, go about it, because I do feel like you're kind of teaching the horse to sit back and pull against you when it doesn't have something behind you. So you're really heavily relying on that flag person and I feel like that catches up to you. Like down the road, when you really want the horse to go forward, it's gonna think in the back of its mind, wait a second, I only ever had to give to this halter when I had somebody behind me. So that's my one issue with this. I feel like the horses again are smart and it can lead to that issue and then you have to address it when they're bigger and older, which isn't very fun. I would generally set up the precedent for giving to the halter long before I ever asked the horse to go forward. So thinking about giving the nose to the side both ways, maybe backing, and then, you know, once the horse understands that it's supposed to give to the pressure of the halter, then you might give to the side and add a little tug so he tends to want to follow around to the side and get his feet moving that way. I'll never pull straight forward on a baby. I'll always add a turn in because it's a lot easier for them to think, move their feet when you kind of pull them sideways. And obviously you are working on that principle of pulling them off balance. So when you pull them sideways, they start to like fall just a little bit. And they think, well, it'd be easier to balance if I take this foot out. And you're just building on that concept of, oh, it's easier to balance here. Setting them up for success, right? You're making the right thing really easy. It's their first thought. I'm getting pulled, I need to balance. And you're making the wrong thing hard, which would be to go away from you because, oh, they need to balance. They're not gonna go this way and fall more off balance, have their head one way and their shoulder the other, right? And then you can build on that, that foot stepping over to eventually have them follow that foot over and keep walking forward out of it until they really understand that when you pull on the halter, they should follow you. And then you can start pulling forward and I'll never get into a true pulling battle. If I ask, add a little tug forward and the horse doesn't follow me, I'll just take it around to a turn and again, set them up for success, make it easy for them. 
until they reliably feel that little feel and just walk forward and they don't need the turn anymore to keep them going. It's just, a, I think, a little bit of a gentler, easier process. Breaks the steps down a little bit more for the babies. Leads to a lot less fighting and drama from them. And also doesn't create that reliance on having a second person to push them forward. I don't see any problem bribing a baby with sugar. Especially when you're trying to get it used to human contact and it's only had, you know, rough handling and been pushed around by people. I don't see any problem with saying, well, hey, I have something to offer you. I don't tend to use treats with the babies I work with because honestly, it just leads to mouthiness and other issues. And I'm not really a treat trainer anyway. I feel like there are a lot of downsides to training with treats. But I think offering a reward is a great idea, and if you want to do that with a treat, you can. I don't think it's the best way of doing it, but I think it's a perfectly acceptable way of doing it. Instead, I just offer the baby scratches, because you know what? All babies are super itchy, they love scratches, and it's a perfectly great reward. And I can do it at any time, at any point. They get really used to me touching all over their body because it feels enjoyable and pleasurable for them. So they're going to be motivated to allow me to continue to touch them and actually seek me touching them, which is a win-win, right? We want horses that enjoy human contact. So I'm just training them to enjoy that by providing something enjoyable for them. A bowl that develops a sweet tooth. More times than that'll turn into a nip. All right, see, that's a good point. It is one of the reasons I don't tend to use treats with babies because you just have to be careful about them getting mouthy and wanting to bite you for food. And I just don't feel like dealing with those complications generally. It's just one extra step I don't feel like taking. But they have made good progress on this leading. Um, you know, now they're running with the pony dragging it, which I don't think is great, but they have made good progress. It does understand how to follow their lead and it was relatively quiet standing between them, getting touched by them. So good progress still, regardless of whether they use sugar to achieve it or not. All right, I hope you enjoyed that segment of me reacting to Misty. It was really good to see a little bit of how they handle the foals in this movie and I'm excited to continue watching this movie because I think there's a lot of actual training that goes on. I think they are generally using young unhandled or rarely handled horses for this so it's a very accurate interpretation of how the horses are going to react to the handling which just makes it way easier to react to and way more representative of how they are actually treating the horses versus all of it being so staged where you're like, well, that was clearly fake. We can tell that the horse has been trained to respond this particular way to the specific aid to make it look like it's having a problem or whatnot. So I'm very much enjoying this movie. I hope you guys are too. If you do enjoy it, feel free to leave a comment down below. Tell me what you liked or didn't like, or just say hi. I love my comments. Wish more of you guys would comment. So leave one down below. Say anything you feel like. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.